Metal Gear Rising Revengeance is an interesting title. It aims to take the Metal Gear series and pair it with the insane combat that Platinum Games is known for. Not only is this a peculiar coupling, but it's one that'll be hard to pull off right. Thankfully they've managed to do just that, at least for the most part. The combat in this game is great, and I love the idea of fighting the enemies of Metal Gear Solid 4 from this new perspective. All of Raiden's moves are smooth and satisfying to use, and it's such a breath of fresh air to play a game that actually requires you to react quickly to stay alive. It plays a little like Ninja Gaiden and a little like Devil May Cry, but at the same time it feels like its own beast. You'll have to learn how to implement your abilities effectively, just like those other games, and man are you given some awesome abilities to play with. Your main weapon is Raiden's high frequency blade, which you can perform light and heavy attacks with. And as you play the game, you'll unlock unique weapons that can be used in place of your blade's heavy attacks. These unique weapons are pretty inspired conceptually, and so are their movesets. Besides your basic light and heavy attacks, you can also use what's called Blade Mode, a system where you slow down time and chop your enemies to bits. Blade Mode's the feature the game pushes the most. During combat, enemies can be cut in Blade Mode to finish them off faster than it would take with just normal attacks. Though, you'll need energy to use it, which you receive by attacking enemies or ripping out their fuel cells. Ripping out fuel cells also regenerates your health, so it's a very useful feature when you're getting demolished during battle. Many enemies can't even be cut in blade mode until you've hit them enough, and they won't die from just losing an arm or leg. This is something I really like about the game. Enemies will actually change how they attack based on what parts of them you cut off. If you cut off an enemy's arm, they'll try to kick or ram into you. If you cut off their legs, they'll still nip away at your feet or try to shoot you. Other things like the guns on the top of a gecko's head can be cut off disabling their use. On higher difficulties, cutting off body parts becomes more important, as you'll want to disable certain attacks as soon as possible to tip things back in your favor. Speaking of higher difficulties, this is the first game in a long time that I've wanted to beat on higher difficulties. The scenarios become more interesting because they throw different enemy types at you more often at the same time. Right now I'm going through very hard, and after that I'll tackle Revengeance difficulty. Other than being a nice challenge, I still have weapons to unlock. Yeah, the game has a decent amount of unlockables, including costumes and weapons. You can unlock different high-frequency blades as you find the various collectibles in the game. They all have different properties, and some even have special effects. The high-frequency machete that you unlock by collecting 10 data storage devices has a shorter range than your normal blade, but you attack much faster with it. I've really gotta hand it to Platinum for the quality of animations on Raiden. They did a fantastic job creating detailed and complex animations that don't get in the way of combat. Raiden will constantly be catching his sword with his feet and tossing it back into his hands while you're fighting, and I'm impressed they were able to do it without it looking weird. The look and feel of combat also benefits greatly from the game running at 60 frames per second. The animations on the polearm weapon deserve praise as well. The game could have benefited from more interesting environments. There are a few that stand out, but a majority of them are pretty bland. It is nice that you can cut parts of the environments to pieces, which never gets old, but at the same time, there's no real point to it, and the pieces vanish almost immediately. I would have liked to be able to admire the things I cut for a little longer. In the original Rising trailer from 2010, Raiden was shown using the environment to take out enemies. It would have been cool to incorporate the destructible environment into the combat of Revengeance as well, but it never really does. I think this was a missed opportunity. The most you can do is nudge an enemy by cutting a walkway down onto them. The game tries to incorporate stealth elements every so often, but it's pretty lackluster. You aren't given many ways to approach these sections, and you only have a few items to play with. Also, the enemies are pretty much brain dead and can barely hear anything. You can spin through the air and land on a gecko's head, yell dead on as you cut it in half and crush its fuel cell, and they won't even bat an eye when the gecko falls over and explodes. It does give you the opportunity to take out stronger enemies in one hit, so it's useful in that regard, but overall, stealth is just half-baked and I don't even bother with it anymore. On the topic of bosses, they're all great with the exception of one or two. I kind of get a No More Heroes vibe out of some of them, which is a good thing in my book. They've all got interesting ways of attacking, and I like the way they've incorporated blade mode into their battles. They've also got really awesome music playing during them, which is a major plus. The final boss also deserves a special mention for being absolutely insane. The camera can be a pain when you're fighting a boss that's much bigger than you, and I could do without the quick time events, but even with those complaints, they're still one of the highlights of the game. 
The game could have done a much better job incorporating the item menu into gameplay. It isn't quick and easy like in previous games. You need to stop moving to access it, and overall it just feels slow and stiff. You'd think that making this menu as fast and easy to access as possible would be something that Platinum prioritized. But I guess not. Because of this, you probably won't be switching unique weapons in the middle of battle, which is another missed opportunity. The game overall benefits greatly from Metal Gear elements. Take the codec for example. Platinum games have always tried to work complex themes into their games, but it's never really worked as well as they hoped. The codec definitely helps flesh this stuff out in a way that it wasn't in their previous games. But at the same time, I'm not sure it fits this kind of game very well. There are actually a lot of codec sequences in this game, and they contain some really interesting stuff in them, but you sort of forget it's a thing a lot of the time. Like I said, this isn't like the Metal Gear Solid games where you have a mountain of gadgets to mess around with. Combat is straightforward, so you never need to call any of your teammates for advice. And you always want to keep moving forward to the next area, so you'll probably miss out on a lot of them anyway. Maybe if Raiden's teammates were a bit more interesting, you'd have more incentive to call them. But as it is, yeah, you're probably gonna miss almost all of them. The game could use some improvement in the character department overall. Seriously, who thought this kid was a good idea? I'm not too keen on Raiden in this game either. His design just feels too cluttered in my opinion, and I'm not really feeling where they took his character in the story. You probably already know this, but the original Rising was meant to take place in between 2 and 4, and I think that would have been a better time for him to explore the aspects of Raiden's character that this game does. It's not that big of a deal though, because the gameplay more than makes up for whatever shortcomings the story has. That's pretty much the way it is for all Platinum Games titles. For those who are wondering, the game does have a lot of cutscenes, but not nearly as many as previous entries in the series. They contrast heavily from the cutscenes of Metal Gear Solid 4, for example, which were slow and meticulous in nature. They're much more condensed now, choosing to jam as much action into as little time as possible, which works a lot more for this type of game. Overall, Revengeance is a solid game. It falls short in some areas, but it more than makes up for those shortcomings with its combat mechanics. I don't think the game achieves its full potential though, but I can see a sequel to this being pretty impressive. We've got some really nice foundations for a sequel to build off of. Just make a longer story with less fluff, and add to the mechanics that felt a bit too weak in this game. That said, what we have here is definitely worth a look if you're into this genre, or just like the Metal Gear series. Anyway, thanks for watching everybody.